Well, France 24 and our sister radio station RFI are partners in a consortium which is called Forbidden Stories that includes around 30 media organisations from Colombia and around the world. And just hours ago, the consortium published the results of a series of investigations carried out by the companies working on what's called the Raphael Project. And that's named after a Colombian journalist, Rafael Marino, who was killed last October. His work exposed corruption and crime from embezzlement in public contracts to illegal resource extraction. And as he feared that he might be killed, he handed over his research to the Forbidden Stories Consortium so that his investigation might be continued if something happened to him. Well, I'm joined now on set by Laurent Richard. Hello, thank you for joining us thank indeed. You, you are the founder of Forbidden Stories. And before we talk, Laurent, I think we can watch first uh, an excerpt from the documentary, which is a portrait of Raphael Marino. I think we are able to watch that together. And then later on, I'd like to talk to you. Dirigido más que todo al tema de factores generadores de violencia, el tema de corrupción, trabajamos con el tema de medio ambiente. Nine days after this call, Rafael Moreno was murdered in the restaurant he had just opened to earn a living. He is survived by three young children and his widow Chiara. His family worries the crime will go unpunished, as it often does in Colombia. His friends saw him as a people's journalist. His Facebook page, Voices of Cordoba, had over 50,000 followers. Hola, ¿qué tal, amigos? Yo, Rafael Moreno, critico las empresas basado en investigaciones, en trabajo de campo y en entrevistas a las comunidades. Well, we've uh, learned a little bit uh, there about what we were able to see shortly in uh, the full documentary, which uh, we hope to air on France 24. Now, uh, can you tell us, how, how does this work? Did he come to you with his fears about his life and his wish that somebody might con continue investigation should anything happen to him? How do you work? At yeah, even a few days right before the killing, Raphael was uh, in communication with our team at Forbidden Stories. Uh, because he was very concerned about threats he just received, more and more threats about some investigation, very sensitive investigation he was he was uh, working on. And so as uh, in our organization at Forbidden Stories, our main mission is to continue the work of assassinated under threat or jail reporters. So this is why uh, Raphael was in contact with our team, because he wanted uh, to uh, share his main investigation with us, his ongoing investigation with us, and in case something happened to him, he wanted us to continue his work. So this is why he joined the network, and this is also why, as soon as we learned about the killing of Rafael, we decided to travel over there and to gather a team of Colombian journalists, South American journalists, journalists from France 24, Pascal Mariani, and many others to continue the work of Rafael Moreno. 
And once you got to Colombia, how did you work uh, as a team of journalists? Uh, so it's, a, it's what we call collaborative journalism. So that means we are a kind of a very large team and our role at Forbidden Stories, our mission is to coordinate and to split the work. So we try for each project to set up a specific team with people who will be uh, uh, will be having a lot of knowledge about uh, the, the 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 area with uh, a lot of sources within the police within the administration a lot can a lot of journalists who can investigate uh, through some FOIA requests some public contracts and investigate corruption facts for instance so we try to set up a large team of specialists to make sure we can continue the work and to reveal what we have been able to reveal today and can you give us a very uh, short idea of, of what you did learn in this? Yeah, so Raphael was um, was investigating very dangerous figures in uh, in uh, in the state of Cordoba, which is a part of uh, an, an area of the Colombia that is very dangerous, that is under the control of uh, the Clan del Golfo, which is a powerful drug cartel, where you can find a high level of corruption within the uh, politicians, uh, businessmen, and Raphael was not only investigating the kind of gold footballers as well, politicians and businessmen. And so he was precisely working on a mining company. He was precisely working as well on environmental crime. He was precisely investigating two clans, two families, the Duque families and the Cali family. And so we were able to reveal uh, a large network of favor favoritism, a lot of contracts who were uh, only given to the family of one of the two clans, we were able to reveal that a mining company was mining without having the license to that, was causing a lot of pollution uh, um, uh, on the population living around the mine. And this is precisely what Raphael was starting to investigate. So there is a lot of uh, things that we are revealing today because there were a lot of leads that he was uh, investigating. Now, he himself, I gather, was... Uh, he had been a miner. He was a former miner. Can you tell yeah. us how he... Uh, came into journalism. Yeah, he's, uh, Raphael was a journalist, was a, a social leader as well. He was, so uh, for his living, he was just uh, before his killing, he was the owner of a fast food of a, a, a very small restaurant as well. But he was, uh, when he was very young, he was working in the, in the mining industry. So it was uh, really a kid from, from this area uh, with one thing in mind, he wanted to, he, he always told his wife uh, why he was doing that kind of very dangerous uh, job. He was doing that for the future of the next generation, for its kids. So he was a very brave journalist, knowing the risk. He was under threats, as we can saw in the, in the, in the story, uh, for many years, for many da dangerous people. But he was doing that basically to defend democracy, to do his job, to inform the public opinion about very serious facts. And he died in October of last year. How much do you know about the circumstances of his, his death? So he was shot and uh, three times by uh, uh, a man that were, we don't see the face on the, on the CCTV footage. On the official side of the investigation, there is really nothing that has been done. There is no, nobody's identified. Nobody's really prosecuted. We don't know too much about the official investigation, and he was he was he, he, and he was uh, killed on uh, October 16, 2022. So as soon as we learned about the killing, we went over there. We tried to collect as soon as we can a lot of documents, a lot of uh, um, uh, we were having access to the email boxes of uh, Rafael Moreno to understand what kind of communication he was having, what kind of uh, public figures he was investigating. We were in touch with the family as well, because for them as well, it was so important, so crucial that we can seek justice uh, uh, in doing our role, uh, our job as a journalist. And this is uh, our mission of Forbidden Stories, is, uh, is to find a way to defeat impunity with uh, traditional journalism. Well, I want to thank you for coming here to talk to us again. That was uh, Laurent Richard talking to us about uh, the consortium he founded, which is, of course, Forbidden Stories, and you've been working on the Raphael project. And we do hope to have uh, more on that project and a portrait of Raphael Maruna uh, in the coming days here on France 24 in English. Thank you so much. Thank you.